Fight Talk number one. Um, doing it, I'm here with Ryan Sheehan, former opponent of mine. Um, Fight Talk actually come about through me and Ryan just speaking on message on Instagram. Um, we would we were just chatting shit like usual, really. And um, then I thought, you know what? People need to hear what we're actually talking about because we were talking about our fight together. And it was funny because we batted each other and yet we're sat on Messenger or whatever we were on Instagram and we're just having a laugh about it. And, and it was, I just thought it'd be good for people to get an insight on, on our kind of relationship pre-fight, during the fight and after the fight. And I think it's a bit different. I think it's um, not something that I've not really seen before. So it'll be good. And like, uh, like I said on my Instagram post, Ryan's a good lad and um, I've always got on with Ryan. So it should be pretty funny. We would just catch shit and um, have a bit of crack and see where it goes. But how are you anyway, Ryan? <laughs> How are you? That's about you. Yeah, all good, all good. As good as can be. It's working. Same as you, I suppose. Sticking to the blade lanes. Yeah, man. Yeah, just about, just about. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> it is. It's hard when you don't have the freedom to do your training because, like, we still work, but like, when you come home from work, you you're kind of you're limited to what you can do. You can kind of yeah. go to back garden and train, but it's, there's no motivation to it, like. That's it. Yeah, it's it's like as well. You have got nothing to kind of look forward to. Like I'm do I'm training and stuff, and I'm I'm working. I'm training. I, I do the same thing as what I probably do Monday to Friday anyway. But yeah. then there's nothing to look forward to. Say on a Saturday, not even going out, but just even going to see a mate or or you know, like it's yeah, you're well restrained or something. Yeah, so um, going to like Nando's and getting food and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I'm quite a, probably like you, quite active social person so uh, it's been it has been a bit um tough but i'm, I'm kind of glad i'm working through it because otherwise i would definitely have been going mad definitely. yeah at least at least with this time off or you can kind of recover with your hands falling apart that yeah yeah exactly I, that's it because um well, i was supposed to get the surgery on my hand a few about well i think it was about a month ago now but that's been pushed back so but i'm just trying to be honest i'm just trying to kind of stay positive and um i'm trying to work kind of behind the scenes now and then hopefully when all this when the scene comes kind of back i can hopefully jump on it and get back into the mix man i can't wait but um that that leads us to the um to the fight talk fight talk yeah i'm not S say that again say so, that again. that fight came around that fight, that fight came around what three years ago this summer nearly so yep. we've always been in contact prior to the fight and post fight like so i remember like when you fought Pulo da Silva when you were what, 18? Yeah. Yeah, 18. Like, and I, I was just after kind of starting fighting like C class and I was like, gosh, like to me, you were the, the best 53 and 55 kilo fighter like in Europe. Like, so I was like, all right, I need to get to that's where I wanna be while when I'm 18. And I got there, you know what I mean? That's that's the hard work and if you believe in yourself, you can get there, you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, uh, uh, cause I remember actually um cornering, cornering. I think it was Kane Smith from Panikos's All Powers Gym, and you fought, you fought Kane, and you it was in the like you were wearing shin pads. Where well, he's wearing a body shield, maybe as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I'd already had a few A class fights by that point, I think. Anyway, so um, I, I think I'd been in Thailand a few times at that point. So I remember actually cornering against you, and you were wearing shin pads, and you were a ju <laughs> you were like ju junior rules. And then, like, I think only, like, maybe, what, that probably about three years later, we probably ended up fighting, or maybe three or four yeah. years. But, yeah, and, and it's weird because we've always kind of, we've always got on anyway. Um, even, yeah. I don't know what it is. I, we've always kind of been quite pally over the internet or whenever we saw each other at shows. And, I again, I even remember you fought on, did you fight on a Yokow show as well? And I, I think I fought Jordan Coe, maybe. Yeah, you fought Jordan Coe. Yeah, that was, I fought uh, Luke, Luke Phillips. And the opener for the Yakko yeah, card, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then yeah. I, rem I remember speaking to you there, and I think I remember you getting. Did you get a photo done with me once as well? Yeah, I did over in uh, Birmingham at the Me You and Perrin. Yeah, yeah. Matt and Colin, yeah. Like, that was, Jesus, I was like 16, 17, maybe, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, it's mad, isn't it? But so, so when, when the fight got offered, so before, before we got kind of in talks to fight, I remember you were stepping up. You'd, you'd fought some good level fights. So you fought Elias Mahmoudi. Um, then you fought Shiro, who, who I also fought in Japan. 
And me and you, so I think the Shiro fight was the fight where I was like, all right, I think this is when, like, this is getting closer because I, I got a, um, well, I lost to Shiro on points with, with a bit of a weird decision and you drew against Shiro and again with a weird decision and a bit of a, like the Japanese, yeah. the Japanese you're not going to get nothing out of them unless you win by knockout. And then when you had, when you had the close fight with Shiro, I, I, had, I had a feeling that the fight was going to get brought up at one point with me and you anyway. But like you said, I think for years, like my, after I beat Paolo, I went through the 53 and 55 kilo division in the UK and Europe. And I, I, st- I, didn't, I didn't get beat by anyone in the UK or Europe. And I hadn't really been challenged for a while by someone from the UK or Ireland. So, so when, when you kind of, you didn't, you didn't call me out or anything, but you, I think Martin might have asked for the fight or something. I can't, remember, I can't actually remember how it came back. He might have asked Andy to put the fight on. And um, I was like, you know, when the, the fight kind of, the fight mode started switching in my head, then I was like, ah, this, this little bastard wants to fight me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to show him then. I'm going to have to show him. And then it, it was weird because, like, like I said, I always got on with you and stuff. But then straight away, I, I kind of, in a way, I, I didn't, not personal, but it was like that switch in my head. I was like, right, nah, like, that's it. I got, I'm going to have to fucking show him show him my level and I think I actually you know what I actually quoted I quoted that in a I can't remember where I actually said it. I was like I'm gonna have to show him my show him the levels or something like that. And um then Not yeah true. then it come about. Those levels to the chip. That's it, that's it. Like a meek like it's like a meek mill song or something. I, I took that I was, quite I, personal because I was like because I was I was like I yeah I was like I, I was like this I was like this can't be how it works. So I was like when you, when you said that, I was like, I really need to step it off. So I was going for even that a little bit more, but not like in a hatred way, but I was like, aye, this is a fight. This is, to yeah. me, it's a fight, you know what I mean? I think the way it's a fight. And yeah, that's the thing as well, because I I had the, I got offered that fight and usually my style was known as like, Daniel's a technical fighter, like he knows the game well, but people, I kept seeing, I think I, I'm, if, I'm probably right in saying that I was probably the favourite for the fight. You probably knew that. I think you knew that as well. But I kept seeing the same thing. Daniel's, I think Daniel just, his technique and experience might be too much. But oh, I, was thinking, that's I, was thinking, I was thinking in my head, like, nah, I want to knock him out. Like, that was my, I, I, wanna, I wanted to put on a big statement because, I, because no one had ever beaten me in, in Europe or UK. I thought, I need to make a statement in this fight. And, and I think maybe that's where... I didn't go wrong because it was obviously the fight was mental, but I got drawn into a, a proper scrap and it was just, it, to be honest, it made, a, it made an amazing fight, obviously. But my mindset <laughs> for that was so different to, to usual. I think when I'm fighting the ties and when I was fighting these other people, I'm really calm. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of collective, calm and collective and calculated. But before that fight, but I even remember in the change rooms, I was warming up music on and I'm fucking banging the pads like whacking them left hooks on the pads. I even put a video up and like, it was just different. I was so, I was so much more hyped. Round one, I come out and it was like, the roles were reversed a bit. So I come out firing big punches, which is probably unusual for, for me to be do, to do really. And, and you were a lot more calmer and, and more collective. It, and it was like, yeah, like, like I said, the roles had reversed. So, um, and I think that was just because I was so hyped up and I wanted to kind of put on a show. So, so yeah. Well, what was your kind of plan for round one? Was it was it how you come out? Um, I obviously from watching your fights over the years, I knew I knew your style. Your, I knew what you were used to doing. I knew your what you were what, what was better. Like so, I said I'm not gonna try and rush in head first in the first round, try and feel you out. And then I was like, I right, you kicked me. I think you kicked me in the head after like a minute and a half, and you gave me a massive like thump in the back of the head like it was had a big lump and everything like for three days like and then that's when the fight kind of got switched up and from the first round to the fifth it was guns blazing and then when we ended in the second round I remember Martin was like Martin was like in the corner he was like this is Dan and we're going this is this is Dan and we're going oh this is all he has for you like and I was like yeah I can where to go for a hair now so because like I'm usually nervous and stuff but I knew all my set myself I was like I this is a big fight this is like rule breaker like this who's the best over this side of the world you know yeah. so I came up in the second round like 
through that massive elbow and split your lip. <laughs> whole, like, anyway. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, yeah. mental. Well, <laughs> I actually remember it wasn't you cut me just you cut me before that. I think you cut me right straight away in round one with on my eyebrow. Um, it was it was only it was only a nick. It was only small, but um, I, I thought again that was what I was planning. I wanted to elbow, and I think because I had it in my head, you just walked in, boom, straight away cut me, and I was like fuck, and then that threw me off. And then then the round two when you cut my lip. I, to be honest. I, I didn't actually know what my lip was cut until like at the end of round three, like when I went back to the corner. I didn't even realise because I don't know how. And um and I was thinking, shit, Ryan's cut me to bits. What the fuck's going this this wasn't the plan. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I don't think a lot of people expected yeah, because like, I was probably the big underdog because like you've been so act you were like so experienced compared to me, but like I was on a fast path. Like I done like a lot of junior fights and Basically, I took every fight I was offered yeah. without second guessing it. So, anytime I'm offered for a fight, I would just take it because I'm, I like to challenge myself. So, I had to take that fight. Even when it was when Andy offered the fight, like my 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 response was yes straight away. Like I was actually really hyped up for it, like from the start. Yeah, no, like. I- like I said before, I hadn't really had many challenges. For, well, I hadn't had any from from the UK or Ireland. So, um, when when I got offered it, like I think I think Andy was like, "Are you sure you want? Are you gonna do it?" And I was like, "Yeah, like hundred percent." Like, how can what, what I kind of put it down to was how how can I turn down and turn down Ryan like that when someone like Paolo de Silva, who was a lot more experienced than me, gave me the chance to prove myself. Um, yeah, you proved yourself because you, you you fought. You fought people that I'd fought. You'd you'd beaten people, or, or, or not maybe not on paper like Shiro and stuff, but you, you'd beaten people that I'd fought and or even lost to. I lost to Shiro obviously on paper, but you you were stepping up the ranks, and and then you fought tension as well. Um, yeah, I mean, just did it three years ago. <laughs> uh, you know, was it today? Was it? I think so. Yeah. No, I was traveling traveling to, to Tokyo today three years ago. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, I Stephen Irvine before that as well. I fought Stephen Irvine like 15 days before the fight, and he gave me a massive elbow on the first round, like busted my nose, I like, badly hurt my ankle. Then I went over the fight tension like 15 days later or something like that. Uh, th- this is the thing. So then I fought, remember, like, like, so you carry on, you carry on. But I fought Nestor Rodriguez as well. Remember, you fought Nestor on Yako. Yeah. So you beat you beat Nestor and I was like, man, I was like, Do you wanna fight Nestor Rodriguez? And I was like, Yeah, McGowan just beat him. I was like, That's a good that's a good stepping stone. So I was like, Yeah, get that fight. Yeah. And I schooled him through that fight, like I dropped him game to count and everything like that. And yeah. that's when I got into the WBC rankings and I was like, This is it. Yeah. You were the one I was chasing for like out of everybody was like, All right, there's certain things a fighter wants and like Obviously, because I was up and coming, and you were the the kiddie at the time around Europe, so I wanted that fight from the start, you know, without go, like going on social media and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I earned and, my fight. That see, this this is what I respected, and this is why this is why I took I, I would I, I I took the fight straight away. There was no hesitation. I'm like you. I fight. I say yes probably to anyone. I fought. I took fights on short notice, and and when when you when you got, when or when the fight before you got offered to me, I thought, I can't, like I said, I can't turn it down. He's, you, you haven't ran your mouth like some fighters would. You've genuinely worked hard to try and get these big fights. And, and that's what I felt like I'd done throughout my career was I never chatted shit to anyone. I just let my kind of fight and do the talking and, and kind of earned my stripes a bit like that. But, um, but yeah, I still, I still thought, even though you'd beaten like Nestor Rodriguez and people that I'd fought, I still thought like in my head, my resume was just a, was just better, which probably on paper it, it maybe was, but I, so I was super, I was so confident going into the fight, and and maybe maybe it was the um, maybe it was 
the kind of thing that let me down a little bit is that I probably actually underestimated you in, in a sense. I, I gen like this is um, from, um it's fully truthful. I I thought I was gonna knock you out in a couple of rounds, and I I genuinely thought that's what was gonna happen. But then I forgot that you're fucking mad, you're Irish, <laughs> and and you lot don't back down from anyone. <laughs> but, but um, but yeah, and and in the fight, you made me you made me go into kind of deep waters. But uh, probably a fight that a fight that I didn't think would would make me kind of go into the, them deep waters was the fight of you. I thought I could use my skill and 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 kind of win the it fight quite comfortably. But I mean, we spoke, this is how this fight talk come about because in round four, I remember you hit me with um, that, I mean elbows, the elbows and stuff were they, I mean they, they they cut, but they don't really hurt if unless you get knocked out by them. Yeah, like because you gave me like I remember you gave me like a big massive hole on my head like in the third round I think it was, and you spit me on the cheek as well. So like it was literally a bloodbath, and we were just swinging elbows and. They were landing like a lot of them elbows were landing too. That's oh, the thing, yeah. like they weren't missing. They were really hitting. I mean, that there was, but the but the elbows were bad, but they were nothing compared to round four. You hit me with a, I was I was I was so tired anyway, and you hit me with a body kick, a left body kick, and it, oh mate, I don't. This is where I don't know how <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know how I didn't go down because it hit me. I think it was like like it was right in the liver. And I kind of went, like proper folded me a little bit, and then you you were punching me in the corner. And I came at you with a one two and a left hook to the body. I remember because I seen you when I landed the kick, you stepped off, and I came again. I landed the combination one two with a I answered with the left body. <laughs> Then that's when it kind of that's when you came back out like yeah so <laughs> I remember when you were hitting me in the corner after that body kick oh there was that kind of thing in my head like I thought I need uh, in my head I thought I need to go down like I'm I'm fucking I couldn't breathe properly but then I thought if I go down in round four I've that's the fight done I'm, I've lost the fight and and the exact thing that went through my head and I've told you this before as well <laughs> I can't lose to this cunt. I can't lose to this cunt. <laughs> I can't. I like, and, and no. you know, the thing is as well, I heard Martin in the corner um, shouting, don't, what did he say? He said something like, don't let that cunt off or something like that. He was going, he was saying something like that. And I just thought, everybody, no everybody's a cunt. <laughs> yeah. That, and, and everybody. All head, that's all I had in my head. I was like, I can't go down. If I go down, I've lost to, to Ryan and his coach is giving me shit in the corner. There's no way, and and I had a big fight after that with Rungnarai, and that was like my that was the fight that I'd always dreamed of, like probably similar to what you you've described with fighting me. I I'd always wanted to fight someone like um like a Thai champion. I mean, yeah. every, probably everyone dreams about that in Thai in Thai boxing, but it was my big opportunity, and I thought if I lost the fight against you, it just would have put a dampener on on that fight. Do you know what I mean? So it was a fight. Your yeah, fight was that. yeah, like and not and that was no disrespect to you it's just it was just a dream of mine for since I since I started and and I thought going into that fight I, I like with a loss like before that it's, it's just it would have been pretty shit so I thought I, I had to dig deep in that round four I genuinely I don't think I've been in some hard fights and I've had some I've been put down on my ass and stuff like that but I think that round four was was one of the hardest rounds I've ever had and, and I'd say round five as well because round round five round four and round five I was I was just so tired but I think it was the first time as well that I'd um, trained for a fight and I had a full-time job on the side. So I think I was actually, I think I actually overdone the training. I think, I think I was waking up at like 4am with Simon Forrest going to work. Well, I was going to train with him at 4.30 in the morning. I think it was. Then we'd go to work, do a full day's work on the roofs, grafting. And then we'd travel up to Dean James's gym and Tony Myers. And that was about two hour journey for me there and two hours back. We'd get in at like we'd get in at like midnight and then do it all over again. And I think I just I think my body was just overworked. So I think in round four and five, the pace of the fight was obviously high as well. Round yeah, four, yeah, because it was a back and forth fight. Like because neither of us wanted to go down because there was too much to stay. Because if you lost, like, I could have got you know where the like, Thai boxing scene is. So I could have nearly got that fight on against the Thai. You know what I mean? You just yeah. know where politics and stuff goes. So like if you lost. Maybe I would have been in line to do that fight or and stuff like that. So 
it was a really competitive fight on both sides for all of us, like because uh-huh. both of us have kind of went two different paths as well since that fight. We've both fought ties and it's been growth. Yeah, it's it's um that that's the thing. I think there was a lot at stake, and I feel like you you'd come off of a, a loss against tension, which obviously yeah. tension is probably pound for pound. I'd say up there with probably the best kickboxer in the world. He's he's the only guy who's ever put me down in a fight like. I've never felt a body shot like it was just so precise that body shot like because I've took a lot of body shots but nobody's ever hit me in this right on the spot and it was tough and when I wanted because I was going to fight James O'Connor like two months after that like a month before you because it was offered to me and I don't want to turn down fights but James couldn't do the fight so then I had more time to prepare for you you know so it was it was a big big fight for me like on that side that actually reminds me of another reason going into the fight with you was, can you remember the scant, like the kind of like dramas with the Muay Thai Grand Prix title? Yeah. We won't, we won't go too in detail with that because that's no. nothing got to do with us. But yeah, yeah, that there was a bit of um, there was a bit of things said with, with me um, and me and Muay Thai Grand Prix as the promotion, but. I mean, that's yeah. all like water under the that's bridge. Right. Isn't that's the path. That's the path, isn't it? Yeah, like, I, I'm. I don't care now. But yeah. It's not but I thought I thought the title that you and James are fighting for. I, I thought it was my title. So then, when they were kind of when there was a back and forth with me and them, I thought, well, you know what? It doesn't matter because if I fight Ryan and beat Ryan, then that kind of just that kind of puts that one to bed anyway. So again, that was another. It was like we were fighting for the ICO World Title, but in my head as well, I had the Muay Thai Grand Prix World Title in there, like because I thought if I lose to Ryan, that basically means that's your title. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. so um, there was there was loads at stake for the fight and and for different reasons. Um, but in in the fight, like so, like I said, with, with the round four and round five, I I was I had to push myself to kind of car- like to stay up um, a few times. But there was um there was round five. I mean, we had that pack horn porn scene. Yeah, that was crazy because that that could have been the the side of for both of us. Like the shots we were throwing and they were landing and. You know the way the fight goes. If one shot lands, it could be lights out, and we were and, really swinging for the fences. And, and I, I genuinely think that round five. I mean, the fight was so fifty-fifty going going into that round five, and that I think that last exchange, I, you, I think you were kind yeah. of. It, it was like you were like kind of ahead a little bit, and then I caught you with the left hook, and that kind of got your legs going a bit, and then I went forward, and I and then I threw a few shots, and I think that, and then I kind of, I think I clinched you, and I. I need and then I need round I'm the back. and I think that kind of yeah, secured yeah. me the win yeah. just. I said, yeah. And and I think that was literally well, what was in it. I think there was like ten seconds left in the wrong anyway, so yeah. From, like as you said, from like from round two to round five, it was a pretty much back and forth fight. It wasn't like it was probably the most exciting fight I've been I've been in. You know, like it's an all at war. Like I always recommend, oh, if you want to watch a fight, watch this because it has everything. The first round was tight boxing, and then. <laughs> the four rounds is just it's mental it's just everything is gone it's it's like, like we were like we were scrapping outside a kebab shop or something after a night out <laughs> <laughs> and like I'm not the fighter that backs down so I just kept in my head like I, I, I was like I'm not losing like I was like I'm coming for you like as much as you want to hit me like I'm coming at you regardless and, and and that's when you when you had me in the corner in that round five you you started the you started the exchange and and but you done you done a similar exchange in round four and and round four was probably my worst round. I think that's where you really got on top in round four, like when you hurt me to the body and stuff. And I thought in round five, if you have another one of them exchanges and you come out the better on that, I lose I lose the fight. And and again in my head I thought I can't lose this fight. There's no way I can let you lose. And and I I found that I think I found the left hook and then I got the the knee around the back and I think that like I said it got me but got me the kind of I think that just secured the win just but. When I was throwing 
going with you. When we were both going, I thought this is like, I remember growing up watching like Porn Sine Pack on, and we, we actually said this after the fight. And, yeah. and it was literally, wow. I was throwing them and I was thinking, shit, we, this is like what the crowd want. Like this, this is what we're, we're doing, like a pack on Porn Sine. Like people are loving it. It was fucking, it was mental. Yeah, the, the crowd, like, our heads were, our heads were getting punched back. Like, I threw a hick kick and everything, like, or no nowhere, like, and it kicked in the back one stage and everything, like, because you kicked me in the head, I kicked you in the back. It was, it was everything you wanted to see in a fight, like, best fight of the year. I, I didn't see a better fight than it in 2017, not just because I was in it with you, but, like, if you want to watch an all-out fight, that's the best fight to watch all that year. A hundred, I think a hundred percent. I think. Yeah, I think a hundred percent. I think um, I, I, I'm like I said, like you said, I don't think I'm. I'll probably it's probably a little bit biased, but I genuinely don't think I saw a fight that kind of back and forth the whole year. And I think a lot of people agreed as well. I think a lot of people proper enjoyed the fight. Yeah. And, and, and even and then afterwards, like you know what, I have I have a lot of Larry Larry support, but they loved you after. I think everyone kind of you know what I think you won the respect of um the whole Muay Thai scene to be honest. And and you won. I mean you you always had my respect as a person, but as a fighter you proper earned my respect. And and that's why I really um well, that's why I really wanted to chat to you about this as well because I knew it'd be quite funny and it, it's really interesting. And we had to dig deep massively, dig deep, but um. In that round five, what, what did you think going into the final bell? Did you think you'd... Because I see a lot of people think... like Some people thought that you might have won it. What, what was your kind of thoughts like going in... It, it, or after that exchange in round five? I... I Watching it back, nowadays, I don't think it was a unanimous decision. Like, I... Watching it, I thought it maybe would have been a split decision. I just don't think the unanimous decision was what it should have been. Because I know the the end of the fifth where you did get my back and you need me, I think, in twice, I think. And that's a big score. So, like, watching the back, I know it was a really close fight and I'm happy how where it placed me in the, the Muay Thai community and the scene and how I get to have big fights develop from that. So, like, it was, it was always going to be a plus for me. It was always going to be a, an, a win, regardless, you know. Especially if I, because I, as you said, like I made you dig deep for the for it, like so. Knowing that, it's it that's a kind of an achievement in itself. You know what I mean? Because we're lucky enough in a sport where we get to meet like our favorite fighters and stuff, and then to be in with them. Because I fought two of my favorite fighters, you and Tippy. Like I fought Mister Knock six months later. Like I fought two of my favorite fighters within six months. You know, and that's it's a big thing. No, that's, yeah, that's and and I'm um, similar again. Like, I I fought two of like two kind of people that I kind of looked up to or, or watched a lot after fighting you as well. And and I think that's that's the kind of cool thing that we both went on to, regardless of the decision, we kind of, we went on to kind of big things anyway after it. Um, and we've, we've kind of got the love and respect for, with each, like for each other as well, which is always like a bonus. And um, you, I mean, you've, you smashed it. You're, so you had the technical fight and I, I watched that and I, I think you won the fight. I think, it, I think you won the fight as well. Um, yeah, it, it was, but again, having a close fight with someone like that is anyway. I mean, he's a he's an animal, and, and like you, he, I was so I was so scared going into that fight because he had a hundred one knockouts, and I was like, this is only like my thirty fifth fight. I was like, I was like, this is massive. Like, I, I but like like I said, I the opportunity was there. I wasn't gonna turn it down. Yeah, no, that's you, that, that's that's what I mean. Like you, you're mad. You, I mean. You're mad. <laughs> You're just mad. But but I I'm the same in a way. I feel like Irish have got the reputation. I've, I've to be fair, I've got a little bit of Irish Irish blood in me. But yeah, I mean you're full Irish. But I'm the same as you. Like, I'll, I'll fight anyone who I don't care who it is, as long as the deal's right and I feel like it's fair a fair deal. Yeah, it has I'll, to be I'll fair fight. because we're young and like we're 23, 22. So like it can become a job for us, a career where like. It can pay bills and stuff, so we have to make sure we're taking the right decisions, the right fights, and not doing like not doing the stupid shit we would have done when we were like 17, 18, taking any fight. You have to be smart, no. That's it. I mean, I I took like the Shiro fight, who we both fought in Japan. I I actually filled in for Dean, and 
I think I took that on like a week and a half notice and I had, and then I had to fly to Tokyo kind of climatize and, and change up to the time and stuff. And I, I mean, I think the fighter in me would always do that anyway, but but like thinking that thinking now, especially after breaking my hands and, and having such a nightmare with my hands, I think now is the um, time to be more sensible. And I think I have to take the right fights and I, I have to be sensible with the deals. Like the deal has to be right now. I think I've, I feel like I've um, proved myself enough to kind of get a fair deal from promoters. So, so yeah, I think that's, that's the next thing. That That's the kind of goal is to keep just getting bigger fights and stuff and, I see. Um, yeah. you, you just won the WBC. Is it international? Yeah, international. It's the everyone knows it's the, um, just under the world title. Like, but that's again, that's something that's in a really big important thing to me because there hasn't been too many WBC champions ever in Ireland. There's a lot maybe in the UK and stuff, but like to have one in Ireland and to be the only third the third fighter because Sean Clancy has the world title as well and he had the international title and he's just Team everyone, so like you're always going to look up to that, and that motivated me to get it. Like, so and then I fought Korolong Sassy Pra as well for like so to fight another Thai who's known for being a dangerous fighter and stuff, like even just to do that kind of a fight and get the win. And I trained extremely hard, like, smartest I ever trained. I watched, I studied more. I it was like something in a movie, <laughs> yeah. You, you know what. You, and the left hook was perfect as well. You, you caught it just timing, bang on. And, and like you said, Kri, Kri Lung, he's, he's known as a, I mean, I saw him fight in Thailand and he's a, he's a knockout yeah. as well himself. Yeah. So to catch him, you caught him with a, with a shot that he usually puts people out with, but is he Southpaw? Southpaw, yeah. But he, I had Aaron McGahey training with me. So Aaron McGahey was holding pads for me, Southpaw, and we were working that movement every night, like every night. Yeah, you, you, you I mean, I think, I think as well, you gave him no respect straight away. And I, I think that's probably from fight, when you, when you fight the likes of like tension and then you fought in against fights and like people like me, who you kind of, like you said, you looked up to that, that kind of um, fear kind of then you just, you, it goes away. The confidence builds and you fought Tepnamir. Yeah. So, so it's probably, your confidence is probably growing and it's probably, it's exciting because I mean, that's, that's the last fight you just had obviously before all this quarantine and stuff, but it's exciting to see where you'll go and, and and it's mad as well because you went down to 53 kilo after we fought at 55 and I I actually thought you looked big against me for 55 kilo so I was big <laughs> yeah but, but like what, what, kilos. Okay. what what did you um with 53 kilo how how difficult was that to make or or how easy was it to make it's easy it's all I have to do is just take out that extra bar of chocolate really that's actually all it is it's not an I don't have to do a massive wake. I can fight between 53 and 57 comfortably, I reckon, you know, because my metabolism is very high and I eat a lot, so, and I train hard, so, like, I don't have to worry. And, and I'm, I'm actually, I hit, like, a 60 kilo fighter anyway on pads and stuff, so if I, if I fight right again, I'd feel confident in my abilities, you know what I mean? You know yourself uh, if you're willing to take it, you, you'd be able to do it, like. Like you, you made fifty three kilos not long long after us as well in Thailand, though. Yeah. So like what? In when you went back to pitching, like you made fifty three again, like five months later, like. Yeah, yeah. I I, I made that. So I made fifty three on the day weigh in as well on this on the same day weigh in, and um. <clears throat> but that that was when I realised that fifty three kilos um is a no go for me anymore because it just it killed me. It was so hard. But um, I think. Oh. That, and what then, where are you going to do now? I think 57 now, 57 is going to be, like, because I've, I've had a lot of time out through the injury and, and I think my body's changed anyway. I think probably, probably put on a bit of weight, obviously, from not training for fights so much, but I think just naturally my body's just getting, filling out a lot more. Um, and and like, I'm just done with them crazy weight cuts with, to go down to 53. I just can't. I can't do it. So, um. 57 and and there's big fights at 57 like there's one championship that's there's there's the yeah, one that, championship fights and stuff so that's that's my goal and and I'm guessing is that one of your goals yeah cuz I just got ranked number 10 in the WBC rankings though like among some big names and tight like some big name ties and um, so hopefully that just gets it's another stepping stone really it's just something hopefully it's on the horizon making like, this close cuz Again, we've put in the work, we've 
fought everybody. We proved it. Like I think they should give us a shot in the future. You know, definitely. By the way, can you show us your WBC strap on camera? I know you want to show the girls it. So go on, <laughs> get it out. Get it out. <laughs> Oh, there we go. There we go. The 57 kilo one's vacant. Oh, yeah. Well, that's getting... have your name on it. Would have your name on it. It's getting taken, Ryan. It's getting taken. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll stay away from 57 unless it's to rematch you. That's the only time I'll probably do it. Oh, now we're Ten talking. Years time. That, that is actually... Ten that, years that, time. That, that's actually Ten got years time. onto the question. <laughs> the questions that I've been asked, yeah? So I, I put a little post on Instagram saying... If anyone wants to uh, send any questions to me and Ryan, just send me Did a get DM. My question. Did you get my question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I win that one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, one of the questions was, would you ever rematch? <clears throat> I'll let you go first. Of um, course. Um, obviously, if in a couple of years' time, I'd like to run it back, maybe... When I'm like turfy, so that I could have like 15 years fighting and then have that one big fight, you know, maybe that's if it comes wrong if we're the same weight, maybe. And it wouldn't be anything disrespectful, it'll just be a maybe a trilogy, you know, just to build build something from the, from it, you know. Yeah. No, yeah, um, 100%. I, like I said to you before, the, I'm, I'm fighting now and I want to take the smart fights, but you proved yourself against me um, and you proved yourself since. And if the deal was right, 100%, I'll fight you again. And I think I think everyone would love to see it. I'd love definitely. to do it. I'd love to definitely. Maybe when we're older. I'd love to punch you in the face again, even though I love you in that. But just yeah. to make me uglier. Is that yeah. it? Just to make me uglier than you. That's all. <laughs> but 100%, I'd, I'd love to. And um, may, maybe even maybe an island. May, maybe maybe an maybe island. Just, just for the just for the just to say we've done two fights and yeah, get one back on the maybe. You know. The thing, my mates, I've got a lot of mates, um, with a lot of Irish mates, randomly like that, or their family are Irish. So I think that I could bring a good crowd over and I think it would be a good laugh. And I think the after party, which is going to be the next question, the after party would be good as well. So. Oh my God. My friends get, like my friends. You don't even understand. They're actually on the session right now. Are they? Yeah. My, my mates are probably. So I think, yeah, the after party would be epic. <laughs> so you know, this this was one of the questions that I got sent. What was the what was the um after fight celebrations for both of us? So again, I'll let you go first. Well, you have to go back to the hotel lobby, and Andy Trasher glued my forehead back together, and then we went to watch the Conor McGregor May Mayweather fight afterwards, which was not into war fight. Like, um, yeah, that that was my after party. What well, were yours? I, mean, uh, I think I rang you actually, didn't I? Yeah, I think we were going to try and meet, but I was in the hospital till about 5 p.m. getting my lips stitched. And um, at 5 a.m., sorry. And But I went and met my mates in Birmingham in Broad, on Broad Street. So this is a funny story. This is actually an insight to, to the kind of shit that happens to me. Only This would only happen to me as well. So I've come out of the hospital. I'm battered. I've got a, I've got a glued eye. Um, my, lip had, my lip had 15 stitches in it. And it was like, it was fucking out, bulging out. And I walk, and I couldn't walk properly because from that right, from that left body kick, I was fucking limping. And I walked down on my own to Broad Street trying to get hold of Pig. Pig was just being an absolute mess. So I got hold of my other mates. I got stopped by a load of um, this, like about 15 lads stopped me. <laughs> and it was, it was like, it was probably about, yeah, 5 a.m. And I thought, oh, I don't want this. Oh. I just don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> and then um so they were like they were asking if i wanted to buy buy drugs and shit like standard birmingham or whatever and i was like nah, 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 i'm cool i'm cool and then um they're like no nah, you do you do and i was like no i don't and i genuinely i thought they were gonna batter me and i was in my head i was thinking what do i do here because i'm gonna You're get already too sore i can't even can't walk back. i can't, yeah, can't back. <laughs> like, I, I just thought how am i gonna get out of this but i managed to get out of this got to the bar to watch the Conor McGregor fight, all my, I saw all my mates in there. The bouncers wouldn't let me in, so I had to I had to watch from outside through the window. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any beer? 
No, I didn't even have a beer. But oh, um, man. <laughs> the sun was probably coming up at that stage. I got a little, I got a little <laughs> treat after, and it, uh, so that, that kind of made up for it, I suppose. A little, little treat. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the I, bought a, I actually bought a new phone when I came back. Actually, that was my that was my treat. I bought a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got asked another question. I think this was Garrett Smiley. Is it Smiley? I think I'm saying that right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how many cuts in the fight? So I, I think you got glued, didn't you? I got glued, but when I came back, I had to get um, six stitches. Six. So I, then Pasha um, didn't do a great job. And, and I remember you saying, did you actually message me? I remember you messaged me saying you couldn't eat properly or something on one side or something. Oh my, yeah, my jaw. I couldn't sleep as well for like, on my, on like my left side of my head for like two days because of the hematoma and it was like massive and I couldn't sleep on that side for like two days and my jaw, I couldn't eat for like two weeks because my jaw was so stiff. It was <laughs> ridiculous. And my, my cheeks were swollen and I had black eyes and I actually didn't get in any nightclubs for ages afterwards. And I was getting followed, followed around like shopping centers, like by security guards and stuff. It's like, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, I, I think that's, I had 15. That's standard for me though. That's pretty standard for me. Like, you, would have, you, would have, you would have only got chucked out anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I had 15 stitches on my lip. I got 15, but I went to I went to I think two or three hospitals because two hospitals couldn't do it because it was a specialist job. So I had to get like a plastic surgeon to actually stitch it, and um they managed to do 15, and then I got glue. I got a glue across my eye, but and and I had like I said the back the the worst injury wasn't even it was the it was the kick that done me that fucked me up for a few days. That did. What what your stitch count? I got 15 on my lip, five on my ear, um, but I've got loads on my eyebrow, but they've all just been glued. So I think 30 or 30, 30 something, I think. Yeah, and close to 40 as well. Oh, yeah. Fucking hell, we need to stop this. Yeah. We need to stop it. Oh, uh, no. A modern career has gone out the door. <laughs> I've got like 15 on my. I've got 12 on my eyebrow and like four hair and eight on my nose. Oh. And I've got like, I've got 12 stitch. I've got 14 stitches in the middle of my forehead altogether. And then I've six stitches here and I've like nine stitches here. Fuck's sake. Mental. Hmm. So I've you, got a cauliflower here and everything. Like it's, uh, that's ruining me. <laughs> you need to find a girlfriend before that gets any worse, mate. Yeah. Uh, single life is better, mate. <laughs> Um, the, the next, the next, uh, question I got was, um, does, do any of you think the fight should have been stopped due to cuts or injuries in the fight? Um, maybe it, like that, that doesn't really come down to us because the judge, the ref depends on the day, what kind of ref it is. Like, and obviously if I cut you and you kept backing off and you didn't want to fight back, like, yeah, maybe it should have been stopped, but like that, you got cut, you kept, you kept coming forward. So. I don't really see a need for it to be stopped because like, if I got the cut, I wouldn't want to stop either. You know, if you gave me that many stitches, I wouldn't want to stop. No, that that's it. I would have been um, I would have been gutted if that got stopped over cuts because right. I don't think the cuts were really affecting, like you said, it weren't affecting our performance. No, um, not at all. And and the thing is as well, I, I actually got the same cut but above on the on the top lip and that, that got stopped. And I remember how gutted I was then. So I would have been gutted and, and there's no way I would have pushed for the ref to stop a fight ever so yeah. that's a big no from me a big <laughs> <laughs> um what so uh, another question was i think we've actually gone through this anyway without even uh yeah that was it was what's your mentality to main what mentality i don't think you actually kind of you didn't answer this i did i said i was really psyched up for the fight uh, which is uh, weird for me but what mentality did you maintain before the fight um I knew it was going to be, I always knew it was going to be a tricky fight because I might not be the most technical fighter, but I knew, I knew my heart, I knew my heart, I, I could have done it. So I believed in myself, really, that's all I, that's all I really do. And I like, I just like that, I love fighting. That's, there's no question, I just love fighting people, so I just needed, that's all my motivation I needed was that. And the fact that, like, because we were so close over the like, way class and for years, like, I was always trying to, catching that was kind of enough for me yeah that's all i needed sweet that's fair good, good answer man um 
this is this is a good one actually. Um, what what is it like going from elbowing each other's faces off to then going to uh, becoming friends straight after the fight's finished? What's it What's it like? I think that's just standard anyway. I've, we were friends anyway beforehand because we like we always kind of got on and like we always wished each other luck for fights and always had messages. We always messages and stuff like. I think you secretly love me. That's the problem. Oh, 100%. 100%. I, that's, that's the problem. I think you do, but... You know what it is? I, I've got a soft spot for the Irish anyway. <laughs> you should come over here. When, the, when all this is over, you should come over for a weekend on the piss. I'm oh, saying. mate. I, I was actually... I was in Dublin on New Year, and it was it was a good crack, man. It was fucking quality. So I, I definitely will take you up on I that. Can't, I can't remember New Year's, to be honest. Uh, I, I just about remember. Just. I actually can. But, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, no, uh, like like he like Ryan said, um, we were we were mates, and and I think this is just part of the sport. I think especially Muay Thai that is such a niche market, it's such a small small community that at some point you're gonna fight someone that you're mates with. It's it's just inevitable, yeah. um, and it's just business. It's it's not. I mean, like I said to you, I maybe I took it a little bit personally when when the fight got uh, offered, but it wasn't like a, it wasn't like any malice in it. It's just hatred. Yeah, there was no hate, had, there was no malice. I, yeah, I just wanted to show that. Cool that. That's, like that's, I've been, I have been called out in the past, like you know that yourself. Like we've messages over, like and people have been calling me out and stuff, like trying to fight me. But like as you said to me, I shouldn't have to prove to them because I'm just, I, I'm trying to just tick the box. As I said to them, I'm trying to tick the boxes. I'm just trying to get my my next goal is to get seventy fights. You know. That's my next goal to myself. That's that's what I want to challenge to have is seventy fights. That's my next. That's what I want to push forward to. Yeah, no, that's it. And and I saw a few things that people calling you out. Um, we've actually spoke about it. And the the things that some of them were saying, I think it was Stevie Irvin, and it, like he was, I think he was saying you were running from him or something. And I I like I like I like all of Stevie. I, I mean I don't really know Stevie that well, but I get on with everyone uh, in the game. Yeah, to be honest, but. He was said when he said something about you ducking him or something. I thought this Ryan ducks nobody. Like let, that is one thing that nobody could ever say about you is you duck a fight. So when I read that, I was like, come on, like like you. Stevie's a good fighter and he's proved. It. I think you beat Stevie. But, yeah, I beat him. Yeah, three years ago. Yeah. So, but and and he's probably he's probably on the come up again. Like he's probably had that and he's learned from it and he's and he's building back up to the fight yeah. and and he just wants to fight you, but. I feel like all he needs to do is just keep winning because he's he's winning quite impressively. So all he needs to do is keep winning, and I think I'm sure that you won't deny him the chance of the fight again. I, I already I already said that to him because like, I I'm not the type to go mode off on social media and stuff. So like I told him like yeah, when it comes up, when the right opportunity comes, it'll happen. You know, just I'm just as I said, I'm just trying to tick my boxes. You know what I mean, and get that's to it. where I want to be. Yeah, that's so, it. Yeah. Um, and I think there's one more question. Did any of you think before the fight it was going to be? I think again we kind of we kind of answered it a little bit anyway. Uh, did you think it was going to be an easy fight or a war? Uh, I mean, I've kind of you, you go again. You you kind of mentioned it anyway. I I knew it was always going to be a tough fight, skill wise and technique and a big test. But you never got pushed. You never got brought to the deep end and had to really dig out for it. You know, and I I really that's my kind of style. Pressure, 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 and they did not take my foot off the gas like, for a second. Oh no, hundred how percent. Like, how did you even find that? Like, because you were so used to fighting skillful fighters and having it sort like at, like schooling guys. Like, how did you find uh, someone up in your face? Or, like, yeah, that, that, like, that's that's what I think. That's European anyway, you know. Yeah, like the styles are different. So when you fight, when I'm, I'm used to fighting in the stadiums and against highs and stuff like this, and um. Like you said, the, it's real calm and collective, and I know usually Europeans sometimes ain't great at that kind of style. Like they, they kind of can't match the ties of that style. But I've always been really confident that my style could beat a Thai style as well. Um, where so then when when you were fight, when I was fighting you, I knew that it wasn't going to be like a Thai style fight. But I mean, in round like I said, round four, when you were kind of pushing, I thought I've hit. I mean, the head kick, I hit you with the head kick, the elbows and. I thought you just didn't stop coming forward, like literally in my face, constantly in my in my face, and you even you didn't. Like, I'm I'm known as a kicker as well, and and you didn't let me, you didn't give me any space to kick, so my kicks weren't coming off like really well at all. I didn't get no, I, I couldn't get no like um, leverage on my kicks, and and that's what annoyed me after the fight. So I remember actually saying to my dad, I said, 
I thought shit, I couldn't even kick him. And he was like, just my dad was like, chill out. Like you just had like one of the most exciting fights of the year. Like that's my kind of mentality. I think I'm just such I think like I'm perfect perfectionist in a way. Like, I just want well, you're programmed because you're so used to it. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what it is. Like it's like a reaction and instinct, yeah. And and yeah. I couldn't I couldn't get that. I couldn't I felt like you really mucked up my rhythm in the fight and I, I didn't expect it. Um, so I couldn't, I couldn't kind of have, I couldn't get my rhythm right. So I couldn't get my kicks off right. So, I mean, you, you, like you said, you dragged me into a war and it was probably, that's what, that's what was the good thing. That's probably the best thing you could have done because I, I, I feel like I'm confident to, to stand and um, play the game with anyone. Ties, anyone wants to play the game. I feel like I can win. But I think dragging me into that kind of fight is probably, a lot of people's best bet and, and usually I'm quite calm and collective even when I get tried when people try drag me into it but you you really dragged me into it and you like you had my rip my rhythm was off you kind of was in my face constantly and you and you you're grinding fire so like you're constantly grinding down round by round you're like you're up in the gas and you, you didn't get to yeah, at all. that's the thing I, I kind of start slow and ha like I'd start slow and I if I get out of the first round that's when I know I can win. Once I get out of the first round, I always feel super confident. It's just this thing in my head where it switches. All right, I'm out of round one. The, yeah. the nerves are gone. Everything's gone. And it's it's literally instant. It's like hunting. You know? I like to hurt, hurt, hurt. That's kind of my mentality. It's like, right, I need to hurt them. Hurt them. It's not like, it's not like one shot. You're, you're looking for constant shots over rounds. And, and that's what you kind I, of done against me. I, I, I know how tough I am as well. Like, I've proved it in over time and time again. Because the only person who's ever put me down... You know, there's actually only ever been two guys who ever put me down is um Tension and Jamie Whelan, but I fought Jamie Whelan at like fifty nine kilos, like but too big. But um yeah. Tension and him are the only two guys who put me down, so I knew how tough I was. Yeah. So I know I could I know I could dig it in. Yeah, no, definitely I that's one thing I did know about you before going into the fight anyway, but so I still thought I was gonna knock you out. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, yeah. but but no, nah, you're you're a tough cookie, I'm mate. Just, and um I'm, I'm too stupid for my own good. <laughs> That's it. That is honestly, true. Honestly, like I I'm too stupid for my my own good. <laughs> it, it's a good thing though, and that, and that that style. I mean, I think your style is a nightmare for anyone. I, I think yeah. any. I think no matter who it is, no matter what the level is, you can you can throw people off their game, and and I think that's your kind of style and grind people down, and and that's why I think you'll do well, and and um I hope. You're you're a good lad, and I really I get on really well with you, and I hope that you get the world title at 53 or 55 kilo. And I think, and you know what, yeah, uh, you know what, I think you will do it. I think because you've got that mentality, and you're you're tough, tough as nails, and and you've worked hard for it. And I, like I said, I hope you get it. Eh? I hope you get it. Hope hopefully I get the 57 kilo one, and you have the 53 yeah, one. Hopefully, hopefully in 10 years time we can have the same conversation, and we can both just talk about having. Pretty much done what we've done and set up what we want to do. Hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent. Um. Anyway, Ryan, yeah. it was a pleasure, mate. And um. Oh, super. Hope, like I said, hopefully we can have this conversation again. I'm gonna be doing more of these anyway of some fighters, but that was that was quality. A bit tuned in. That was quality, and hope hopefully we um we can meet up at one point and have a bit of a bit of a session in Ireland or yeah. whatever. That would be. <laughs> So, um, after after the lockdown and this whole thing's finished, I I wish you all the best, and um, hopefully, you, like I said, I hope you get that. I hope you get that world title, mate. Let's keep going for it and just keep That's grinding, right. isn't it? Keep grinding. That's it, mate. That's it. That's all we can do. Oh yeah, nice one, Ryan. Anyway, thanks thanks for coming okay. on. Keep safe. Keep safe.